Okay, so today I'm going to be doing a very quick motherboard component level repair video because I have about 25 minutes to catch somebody I'd like to ask out for Valentine's Day before they go home. What we're going to do here is try to figure out why there's no picture on the screen. This turns on, but there's nothing on the screen and there's no chime. And Man, if you've been watching this video series for more than five minutes, you should realize that what you need to do is check and see if your computer has CPU vCore. It's not an image problem when there's nothing on the screen if it doesn't chime. This needs to chime. It needs to go dong. As Sonny would say, it needs to have a nice long dong in order for it to actually work. And when we turn it on, we don't get a nice long dong. I know we don't even have a nice long dong. Nobody present here has a nice long dong. You know, if I did, I'd have a date for Valentine's Day. And <laughs> uh, I don't have a speaker over here, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to check and see if we have CPU vCore. Thank God I bought a Fluke because this thing would be broken if it was anything else right now. Let's put it on the stand and check for CPU vCore. My test fan is broken. Nothing. And again, this is a this is a quickie video, so if you want the full explanation of everything, you can look at the CPU IMVP underscore ton video that I did a long time ago. Basically, this buck converter I see is meant to take 12 volts and turn it into 1 volt or around there for the CPU. Now, this is something that can be used in many different machines. It can be used in machines that have a 12 volt power supply, an 8 volt power supply, a 14 volt power supply. But how does it know the speed to set the switching? It's going to tell that from a resistor going from the high side power supply to the chip. And unfortunately here, they're broken. Now usually this would take people a little longer to find because the person who sent this in ultrasonically cleaned the hell out of it before it got here, which makes it difficult to find exact flaws. The reason being because where I would usually see a bunch of green stuff in this area here, I don't see any green stuff in this area. There's no real clue. I just know to look there because, well, let's face it, I fixed enough of these things by now to know where to look for shit. But yeah, usually for the beginner, when you get this stuff, it may be harder. So I don't recommend that beginners work on boards that have been screwed with before because you can't really understand what the other people did. The additional variables are going to confuse you and just make your life a little bit more difficult. But after doing the same exact thing, 50, 100, 200, 500, 1,000, 2,000, 6,000 times, you get to understand what's going on. At this point, I have done the same shit enough times that I'm not even opening the schematic. No schematic open here. But it's obvious what's going on. So what you should do to understand this video is check out my video on what is a buck converter because I use visual representations to teach you how a switching power supply works. So when I say setting switching frequency based on the high side power supply, you'll understand. So the way a buck converter works, very simply, is it's going to take a higher voltage and turn it into a lower voltage. So this computer has a 12 volt battery. However, it has a CPU that runs off of one volt. If we send 12 volts to the CPU, very bad things will happen. The CPU is not going to be happy with that. So we have to send it 1 volt. So how do you turn 12 volts into 1 volt? Well, what we do here is we switch. Go back and forth, switching, 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 switching. So we'd say, here, have 12 volts. Now here, have none. Now here, have 12 volts for a second. Now here, don't have 12 volts. And what happens is it averages out to 1. So if you have a little bit of 12, a lot of nothing. A little bit of 12, a lot of nothing. And we keep going on that way. What happens is that it'll average out into 1. You may be wondering if I have a date, to somebody to ask out. Not really a date. We'll see. Why am I here doing this? Why don't I stop? Don't I, you know, why don't I leave early? Well, one of the things I notice with resentment in relationships is very often people become resentful because they put a lot of time or effort into something that they probably shouldn't have, and then the other person doesn't reciprocate it, and then they get irritated. Now, this person never asked me to ask them out, 
So wh what right would I have to be mad at them because I took off work early to do this. I took off work early so that I could ask you out for Valentine's Day. And, you know, that's just weird. And, it's, and, and there would be resentment there if I actually said, let me put on hold $325 so that I could see you. And then there becomes the, the, the irritation, depression, and bleh, and resentment, and all those nasty things that happen with the real world relationships. So the way I eliminate it is by being considerate and nice, but I'm not going to put my I'm not going to destroy my life for other people, you know? So if things go well, that's great. And if they don't go well, well, I didn't inconvenience myself, I didn't go out of my way, and I didn't ruin my day. You go out of your way for your wife. You go out of your way for your girlfriends of three years. You don't go out of your way for ran for randos. I guess that's a popular millennial word, randos. I saw it on an advertisement on the subway. One of those really stupid modern advertisements, you know, where they try to make it look really simple and elegant and cartoony all at the same time, and it just kind of winds up looking dumb, but they think it's cool because it's modern. So one of these has a solder blob, and the other one has a wire. Yeah, I'm cool with that. You cool with that? Yeah, if you're not cool with that, I don't really care. I get to collect the money either way, so... You can be cool with whatever you want. Why am I asking approval on work from YouTube people? It's beyond me. A lot of people on EEV blog don't approve of anything that I do, apparently. There's this interesting thread. It's like eight pages long. and You curse too much. You use too much flux. You don't know what you're doing. You think you... Well, just shut up and go away. <laughs> That's what I have to say to that. I've said on this channel a lot, when I have questions, there's nobody I can go to have them answered. And every now and then, somebody will go, you should post in the EEV blog forums. And no thanks. No thanks. It was funny, the sheer amount of misquotes in that thread. Like, you are afraid of your competition. You and blah, blah. It's like, you realize that I hold a class where I teach my competitors how to do the same thing I do, right? Like one of them being somebody who works three blocks away from me who used to be an employee. People are silly. Let's see what I get. Do I get V-Core? More V-Core? Will any of the board repairs I do today actually work? Ooh, point 0.8. That's V-Core. Okay, that's cool. I get nothing on the screen. Whatever. Probably because I don't have the screen plugged in all the way, you stupid motherfucker. I guess all the EV block people are right. I really don't have any idea what the fuck I'm doing. I have 0.8 volts of V-Core, but nothing on the screen. Blah. Come on. Turn on. Now it's not turning on. Oh, man. Those electronics engineers are right. <laughs> They put a pox on me. All right, so what I'm going to do over here is check L the LCD enable signal so I can just quickly tell. Is the screen even being told to turn on? Okay, the screen is being told to turn on, and it is. That's right. Fuck you. Pox on you, electronics engineers. Pox on you, non-practicing people that tried to s curse me through the damn screen. Check it out. Screen. It's lighting up, which means I have V-Core, which means I'm good. So I have three minutes left to make it to ask this person out before they go home. I should spend some of that showing you what was wrong with this motherboard. All right, let's go over that. That, yeah. Okay. A date lasts an evening, but a motherboard repair video is forever. <laughs> yep. All righty. So let's move over to the screen. So most of my dates go awful. I think like my longest relationship was like two weeks. <laughs> I am, oh uh, yeah. Not one that gets along with a lot of different people. So 
these two resistors going at the TON pins. TON stands for time on, meaning how long is the buck converter going to be on. So down here on the next screen, we have this. This is a buck converter. So this is a transistor, and this is the 12 volts for the CPU. This is going to switch on, off, on, off, on, off. And the inductor is going to smooth that out. So it's going to go on, off, on, off, on, off. And it's going to be on for a tiny bit of 12 volts, then off for a long time so that we can get that 12 down to 1. But this needs to know how long to be off and on for. And this is going to tell it when to turn on and off. Now, for this to be able to do that properly, it needs to know what the power rail is that that transistor is working with, which is what these two resistors are here for. And they're very commonly blown.